Hello, and finally, Leeds United have announced the signing of Rene Maric. Finally, I've been waiting to do this video because this guy, let me tell you, is very interesting. Very, very interesting. 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 And without any further ado, let's get into it. Right, so here's the announcement right here on, in front of you. <laughs> very Yorkshire then, right in front of you. Anyway, so... Leeds United are delighted to announce the appointment of Rene Maric, 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 I'll go itch, as our new assistant head coach. Croatian Maric arrives at Ellen Road with an exciting CV, and yes, it is. Was Last year was at Borussia Dortmund as assistant manager at the age of 29. He's 29, guys. 29. Incredible. Uh, despite being just 29, thanks, Leeds. Um, he began his coaching career at TSU Andenburg before rising to prominence at Red Bull Salzburg. Sound familiar? <laughs> Initially as a youth coach in 2016 and then as assistant head coach between 17 and 19. Yeah. There's the, you know, the Red Bull connection. So whilst um, he was at Salzburg, Marich began working with Mark Rosa. Don't know Mark Rosa is a very highly rated manager who's managed predominantly in the Bundesliga. And obviously, this guy, you know, Marich has followed him around a lot of his career. Um, it's like he's, he's right hand man, but now he's now he's took a step and he's, he's come to Leeds. But yeah, um, a successful period in Australia, which saw the side reach each European Europe League semi finals. Marich joined Rosa at Brushy of Munch and Gladbach at the start of the 1920 season. And if you know about that season, they were very good. They had a very impressive season, and I watched them a few games, and they're a decent side. I'm pretty, don't quote me on this, I'm pretty sure they beat Munich. Pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, and by 21 22, the duo headed to Borussia Dortmund before leaving the club at the end of the season despite a second place finish. And I'm very excited. He's 29. Let me just. 29. Mental. A little bit on what Jesse Marsh said about him. I've known Rene for a number of years and we've stayed in contact for a long time now. Whilst we haven't worked together before, we do know each other well and I believe he is perfect fit for the assistant coach. Our footballing philosophies are very similar. He will be really welcome. He will be a really welcome addition to the team, working alongside Mark Jackson, Ewan Sharp, and Cameron Tossack. And finally, uh, Victor Otter has his say. I am very pleased to see Rene pick up over several other options. He had to choose from across Europe. Interesting. We interviewed numerous candidates all over the summer, and as soon as Rene was available, interested, we set our sights on bringing him in to support Jesse. He's a top player coach. I believe he can create a successful partnership alongside the exciting staff. And before we move on quickly, I just do want to say yes, exciting staff. Sorry, I've got a leg massage ball in my hand. Um, I think that's the thing that's excited me most. Forget the signings, they've been brilliant. The staff we are building, they're all young. You know, we've got experience in there, Mark Jackson, some of the older guys we brought in, some of the names on there, you know, but it's a good, you know, Michael, the 21's manager, good, young, hungry guys who, who want to succeed. Let me just clarify, this guy's ni uh, 19, this guy's 29. He's younger than Click. He's younger than a few of the players. So bearing in mind, this was from two years ago, so it says he's 27, this was two years ago. Anyway, we'll get into it. So, first of all, Borussia Mönchengladbach's Rene Maric is 27 and is the youngest and most interesting assistant coach in the Bundesliga. Big praise for a 27-year-old there. Yeah, so um, former Ranch player who started coaching his local side, which we already know about, at 17. So, yeah, um, there's a lot of stuff here. I used to do writing, you know, I used to break down, um, so I used to break down, like, coaches... For, uh, tactics and philosophies. He used to write about them. That's what he was, I think, whilst he was doing his coaching. He used to, he used to be, um, he used to do a lot of writing on coaching tactics and all that, which is very different when you, a different background. You know, there's nothing really about a playing career. He went straight into what education, coaching, and then writing. He loved writing about tactics. As it says here, his lengthy essays on the finer details of the modern game didn't make for easier reading but woman many admirers of the industry. Thomas Tuchel, then at Mines, commissioned opposition scouting reports. He was later tasked to explain the mechanics of Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp's pressing game to a few Premier League clubs. 
work on player analytic analysis for Brentford and Michelin followed. Wow. So there, there's a little teaser at a young age that all the names and the people he's been around and the clubs he's been around doing work for. This was before he was a coach as well. So he was, he was an analyst, a, free, a freelance, I guess, working for clubs and talking about Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp's tactics and doing work on them for Brentford as well. Impressive. <laughs> it's very impressive. So then how did he get to coaching? Let's see. Marek struck up, struck up a friendship with Red Bull Salzburg under-18 coach at the time, Mark Rosa, Marco Rosa, and was appointed assistant in 2017. They won the UEFA Youth League in 2018 and were promoted to take charge of the first team. Since last summer, uh, Marek was, has been working under Rosa at Gladbach. So the question was, how exactly did you get the job at RB Salzburg? So uh, you can read the app for yourself. I'll just go through the bits I found interesting. So he sat down with Rosa, just had a chat, talking about training, tactics, philosophies, analy analytics. Rosa basically said, yeah, let's go. We'll do this together. Then obviously they got promoted together. A big thing was the value on play development. We know about play development. Um, that was a big thing for him, and that was a big thing for Rosa. He's very big on play development, what I've got from all this. He loves play development. Really loves it. Obviously, working with the youth teams, working with play development all his life, analytics, analysis, scouting. You know, he's big on play development and improving players. So he's talking here to Ernest Tenner, who's the head of Salzburg Academy, you know, obviously trying to get the job. And this is brilliant. Let me just go. <laughs> I was an outsider, but I had an analytic background and many ideas about utilizing different forms of game exercises in training that I had written about in my book. He said those, those connected with Tanner, who had installed at the academy, a similar process, similar ideas, even if the terminology was different. But after this conversation, one week later, Tanner just said, this is brilliant, we'll take you, here's your contract, here's your starting date, here's your salary. And I said, nice. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it's a little bit, as you can see, I'm very excited about this. Um, I'm very excited about this. You know, obviously you've got that Red Bull connection as well, which is obviously why Jesse is really keen on wanting him, having him the play development, the analytics side. You know, Jesse always talks about he loves analytics, he loves looking at videos. This guy is the king of that, or will be the king, the top, the top dog at that. He's known around Europe for doing that. Part of Borussia Dortmund, who have an amazing play development. They bring in the best players, you know, the developed players beyond belief. The Red Bull system develops players beyond belief. A lot of it is down to the work of this guy who's 29. So what's bad to be said about this? Now we're going to get into, we're going to deep dive into his kind of philosophy and his, the way he wants to coach, his style, his coaching style. Um, and I've rambled on, but he's very interesting. So obviously he's got the, the, the that German pressing system in his head. He's got that, that Red Bull system in his head. But... He's just, he made this quote, he's made it twice, I've heard him say it twice, you know, from Mike Tyson. Everyone has a plan until you get smacked in the face. And what does he mean like this? By this, let me explain. That's football, he says, too. You can go out with certain ideas of how you'll play, then the opposition react to those ideas. Change the way they attack the ball or position themselves, and you have to change in response. It doesn't always happen because of the manager. Either sometimes the player realises he needs to be four metres to the left to close the gap. And by a simple act, he solves a problem for his team and creates a new one for the opposition. There are infinite decisions made in a game of football. It's impossible for the coach to make decisions for the players. It is impossible the coach to make decisions for the players where did we hear that a certain under 21s manager hmm? there's a bit of a link going on here we can give them guidance we can give them a guideline sorry or a solution space through principles they have to decide decide and execute on the pitch that is very similar to old michael in it Exactly the same as what Michael said. 
They give them the guide, the foundation, but it's down to the player to execute most of it on the pitch themselves. We're seeing these connections. This is what I mean. We are, Leeds United are building a great team behind Jesse Marsh. And this is going under the radar. Everyone's looking at signings. That's great. But who's working then signings? Who's, who's part of this big ball of people? It's a terrible description. But the people involved are very important. Rene is a big part of it. And you can see the connections. They're obvious. They're all obvious. It's the last part of this article is this bit here. But the fair running's talking about some. And the question is, that all sounds very abstract. Huge <laughs> simple replies, it's not. Take this basic situation. Let's run right. Let's do this. Your team is on the ball. What's the aim? Right? You want to score a goal by keeping the ball and find an option to pass it. Ideally, forward. Forward passing. Different teams do it differently, but the principle is the same. Your teammates try to make themselves available. If they are not available, you try to help them by opening space for them. Based on these two, three basic actions, you try to come up with solutions and situations. Some teams will take a riskier approach in order to get forward to the goal quicker. Leads. Others want to protect the ball more. Man City. But the actions are essentially the same and repeatable in training. So this gets into the philosophy part. What is his exact philosophy? And he doesn't have one. Is there's a great app, there's a great uh, podcast here I took notes from, which I'm going to talk about his philosophy, what he wants to see in a football game. I'll do it really quickly. I'll get onto it. But this is brilliant. This this tells you what he wants. And he is not a particular style he wants. He, like the other guy, there's a certain foundation that he likes the players to be adaptive. He likes them to do their own thing. Let's get into it. Also, it's a great podcast here by Analytics FC Podcast. If you want to check it out, check it out. It's really good. So he says in this, he's, this is all paraphrasing, he's very focused on players and player development and understanding. We know that already. He wants them to understand football regardless of style like the previous guy, like Jesse Marsh. He wants them to understand the game, why they're doing things, the ideas of doing things so they can use their own minds to create situations. They're the ones with the talent. If you can unlock that and get them to think about football, talent will ooze throughout the pitch, right? That's the idea. And then you're asking, like, how can you not have a style? How can you not have a particular style? And he said this, the core of the Abbey style is pressing and transition. We know that but stresses in games that you might have 80% of the ball, hence the situational approach. So he's saying, if you have a particular style, what are you going to do? If you're a counter-pressing team, you don't want a lot of the ball. What are you going to do when the opposition let you have the ball? Right? This is the idea. But think about Michael as well and the space. Bring out pre-season. We played a lot with the ball against Blackpool and played teams like that. We had more possession. That's going to happen this year. That will happen. Teams will think, right, they're not as good with a ball. Let's give them the ball. How will they play? And this is this is it. You can't have a particular style. You can have a core, but you have to adapt. And this is what these coaches are about that we're bringing in. And he said, well, he was at, um, in Germany. I can't remember which club. Maybe Leipzig? Um, Salzburg, sorry. He developed their own version of packing. So packing is, is like this device you wear or it, like the thing that tracks you, follows you around wherever you move. Packing measures every single forward pass or dribble that is completed and how many opponents you have bypassed during this action. And he uses this in matches and in training. So basically, he really loves, like we've seen with the other two coaches, forward passing, forward movements, forward dribbling, quick movements. That's what he prefers. Obviously, he likes to adapt to that if he needs to. But he loves the forward pass. And he, this, this packing brings every player and can tell how effective each pass is, how many people the ball passes. It, it's crazy. And that's what that's analytics. That's his side. That's what he's very good at. And he's going to use everything he knows about that to help Jesse Marsh. Is that not exciting to you guys? Because it is to me. He's a genius in this thing. 
he's a genius in this this area. Also, just a quick one, users packing can be used. I don't know how, read, listen to the thing, I'm sure it'll tell you. To identify training loads and risk of injuries. Please, <laughs> we need that. <laughs> So, so what what's he not like? And this is this is an interesting thing because under Bielsa, this is what we did a lot. I'm not a big fan of crossing in general because it's not efficient. So he's not a fan of crossing. However, thinks there's a good specific areas when it can work. Wouldn't coach players high long crosses? So you know them long whip crosses in the box. In general, would not want long shots, but can take training girls where they can create efficient ways of scoring in certain zones. So generally doesn't like long high crossing or long shots, but thinks in a specific system, in a specific area of the pitch, they can be very effective. And obviously his thinking has come through research and his own analytics that he's done since he was 17. So he's got a lot of information and this is why he's a good assistant. It's Jesse's system. Now he's got to use his tools to help Jesse's system thrive. Thrive. And that's it. That's all I've got. I can't wait to see his ideas, his thoughts on on fluidity and pressing and forward passing and adapting and not liking crosses. I can't wait to see this season. I'm 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 it's it's so close now. I'm filming this on Saturday night. I'm going to Leeds game tomorrow. I can't wait. Yeah, this is gonna be class. I can't wait for this season. Watch his finish 19th, whatever. But as of now, I'm really excited. And just as far as I'd like to say thank you to everyone that commented. It's, I'm really enjoying the comments I'm getting. Really appreciate the part. Really appreciate it. Uh, please continue to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. You know, give me your opinions. I love your opinions. And if you don't agree with me, just say what would you do in this situation. Let's talk. You know? If you do agree with me, thank you. I appreciate it. And yeah, I can't wait for this season. Peace.